Today I want to talk about how to set goals and strategies. How to achieve your goals and what strategies do you need to employ in order to achieve them. Now, I come from an academic and clinical background. I've worked as a doctor in clinical practice and as a senior lecturer and program director at multiple universities in the UK. One of the common themes that I've seen in everyone around me, and I've worked with some very successful and driven people, is that they all essentially have a three to five year plan. Your plans need to be not so far in the future that you lose focus and forget about them, but they also can't be that unrealistic that they're essentially set for next year or the next few months. A three to five year plan allows you to focus whilst giving you the breathing space to set your strategy and to take those small baby steps that you need to do to achieve your overall goal. When you decide what your goals are, when you decide what strategy you need to employ to achieve those goals, you have to ask yourself the question, what are my priorities? Priorities vary. Individuals have different priorities. It could be that you want to progress your career, achieve a more senior position within your role. It could be that you want to have a higher income in three to five years time, or maybe that you simply want to focus more on your life as an individual, your health, your family, and have a better work-life balance. This is important. If you don't set the right priorities, you won't be happy once you achieve your goals. You can't base your priorities on what others tell you or what others are doing around you. That's a trap that many people fall into, especially when you're in a very driven, motivated environment where everybody's out to get the, the next big thing or, or working essentially to outdo each other. That's a problem because if you work in that kind of environment, it becomes very normal to keep moving forward without ever thinking about why it is you're actually moving in that direction. Conversely, if you work in a very demotivated environment, in an environment where people are, have no sense of direction, no great leadership, no motivation, and where there's not a lot of inspiration going on, then it can become very normal for you to simply slow down and not achieve your potential. You have to take yourself away from the environment where you're working, and you have to really ask yourself the tough question of what your priorities are. And those priorities are very much personal. If it really isn't about career progression, you have to be honest with yourself. If it's more about your health and well-being, again, don't shy away from that. If it is about family and personal time and work-life balance, put that at the top of the list. You have to decide. But if you don't have the right priorities, you will not have the right goals and you will not be happy even if when you achieve them. Once you have the priorities, you have to ask yourself, what am I missing? Why am I not achieving those goals already? Why am I not there? In other words, what do I need to learn? What skills do I need to learn? What knowledge do I need to gain? What experiences do I need to have in the next three to five years in order to achieve those goals that I've set myself based on the priorities that I have? Don't forget, three to five years gives you enough time to review your priorities, to review your goals, to review your objectives, even your strategy. Don't be shy to change tactics. Don't be worried if you realize within six months that the priorities you set six months ago are somewhat outdated and that you've moved on from that. You can amend, you can adjust. And that is the whole point of having a three to five year plan. It gives you enough time to actually constantly review what you're doing, why you're doing it, and where you're at. Learning is important, we all know that. How do you learn? You learn from those around you, you learn from mentors, people who've been there and done that, and you learn from leaders, but you also learn on your own. You can learn from reading, you can learn from watching videos like this one, you can learn by reflecting, you can learn by going back to knowledge you already have and adding to it. Activating prior knowledge and experience is very important. Now that you have your priorities, now that you understand what you need to learn and where your skills and knowledge gap lie and a timeline, three to five years, you have to ask yourself, what are my short-term objectives and what are my long-term objectives? In other words, 
There are those objectives that we have that are really easy to achieve, but there are others that are much harder and we have to be realistic. So for example, if I want to run my own business, I'm not gonna be able to do that next week, nor am I gonna be able to do that necessarily in six months time, but I can work towards that and achieve it possibly within a year, depending on what type of business we're talking about. Let's say, in my case, as a doctor, I want to run my own practice. Now, if I want to do that, there are certain skills I need to learn in business, in management, HR, with respect to regulation and guidelines, employment laws, quality assurance, the financial aspects of running a business as well. And I will need to understand what I can do on my own and what help I need from others. All of these are long-term objectives. They're not going to be done tomorrow. So you have to divide your objectives into the short term and the long term. That's important. That allows you to be realistic about what is attainable and what is achievable and the amount of prerequisite work and knowledge required. In all of this discussion, one of the most important points is to have a clear sense of direction. One of the biggest challenges that people face when they set themselves goals and objectives is that they don't necessarily know where they're headed and how they're going to get there. That goes back to your strategy, but also a clear sense of direction. You need to know where you're headed. You need to know how far along the journey you are. And one of the ways to do that is to review and reflect on a regular basis, weekly sessions with yourself and with mentors, where you review how far you've come and what is to come next. And then you have to have longer term sessions, monthly, six monthly, yearly. These are important because these are the small baby steps that you need to take in order to achieve the major leaps that you need to undertake. In summary, when you set yourselves goals and objectives that you want to achieve, you need to base that on your priorities. You need to ask yourself the hard question of what your priorities are. They're not other people's priorities, they're yours. And you need to set a clear strategy with a clear sense of direction and a timeline, which should be around three to five years, with regular sessions where you reflect and review where you've come and how far you've come. And you shouldn't shy away from amending and developing and changing and enhancing your strategy or indeed your aims and your objectives. You need to learn, you need to understand what you're missing, what skills, what areas, what areas of expertise and experience you need to get there. You need to be the one in the driver's seat. You're the one trying to get to that goal, to that objective, whatever it may be. It could be, as we said, getting healthier. It could be making career progression. It could be running your own business. It may be becoming financially independent. In the next session, I'm gonna talk about how to pick your mentor. This is very important because if you don't have the right mentor, you won't have the right guidance. And if you don't have the right guidance, you won't have the right sense of direction and strategy. If the contents of this video were interesting to you, please feel free to share, like, and follow. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask and I will respond to you in due course. Thank you.